So thank you again for uh, accepting my paper and for uh, organizing this wonderful conference. Um, this presentation today will touch upon a topic that Egyptology has focused on recently with more criticism and awareness, uh, which is its colonial past. Um, my aim is to show how science fiction has boosted a narrative about ancient Egypt uh, from the 19th century, especially during the 1970s, even if ironically uh, the aim of science fiction was to imagine the future of humankind. In this regard, sci-fi sci mirrors the society who produces these narratives, making it possible for historians like us to understand the social relations and the tensions this kind of media uh, can produce. Um, I will uh, discuss about Battlestar Galactica, which has a very specific colonial perspective about ancient Egypt. And this can be noted uh, specifically in the two first uh, movies uh, made for TV uh, in 1978. Uh, the show was produced and idealized by Glenn A. Larson with 24 episodes. Uh, Battlestar Galactica tells the story of a battle, uh, of the battle actually, between humans and the Cylons, who are a race of machines created by an extinct reptile race. It starts in a very distant uh, but similar star system where the, the 12 colonies of mankind um, are actually named after the Zodiac, uh, believed to reach the uh, armistice with the Cylons. And of course, they were betrayed and attacked and the Cylons destroy all the colonies. The only surviving battleship, which is the Galactica, uh, was led by Commander Adama and gathered the survivors of the colonies in 220 ships. Commander Adama then tell the survivors about the long lost 13 tribe of humanity that according to ancient scripts settled on a legendary planet called Earth. The lost tribes of humanity started then uh, looking for uh, our planet, uh, for Earth, which location was then a no for them. Uh, and they, the, the whole series uh, is about this attempt to find our planet and again, uh, fighting and escaping uh, the Cylons. Uh, Galactica, of course, has various similarities with other sci-fi movies from its time, especially Star Wars, which I must admit I'm a big fan, uh, which was launched also in 1977. Um, and George Lucas and the 20th Century Fox studio, uh, Sioux Universal Studios and the Galactica producers, Larson, for plagiarism. Uh, similarly to Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica tells a story about the past. As George Lucas once said in relation to Star Wars in a 1980s interview, this has a powerful impact in the narrative. Usually sci-fi is about the future of humanity, and that leaves a lot of space for disagreements and speculation about how we imagine and how we project our future. However, for Lucas, when science fiction happens in the past, it can be perceived not as a speculation anymore, but as history or even more as a mythology. Glenna Larson produced various shows in the 1970s. He was a very uh, famous, very well-known um, TV producer. So among uh, his shows, we can um, pinpoint here, uh, Beck, Buck Rogers in the 25th century, The Night Rider, Magnum, and when he produced this series, he was already a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Later Day Saints. Um, he was a Mormon um, member. Not coincidentally, the story of Battlestar Galactica includes several references to Mormon theology. In fact, the story of Galactica was the story of the exodus of humanity, the lost paradise and the fight for freedom, which are biblical themes. The show was initially intended to be called The Ark of Adama, and there, there are many, many Old uh, Testament references in the story, such as the 12 colonies uh, being the 12 tribes of Israel and so on. But I, uh, we are talking about ancient Egypt, so what is the place of ancient Egypt in this narrative? Uh, Larson said uh, in 1980s uh, in one interview that he had a very simple premise to the show, and I quote here, no one really knows to a finite fact who or how they built the pyramids. The opening words of each episode uh, is quite revealing and I, I will read again. There are those who believe that life here began out there. 
far across the universe with tribes of humans who may have been the forefathers of the Egyptians or the Toltecs or the Mayans. Some believed that there, there, there may be brothers of men who even now fight to survive somewhere beyond the heavens. And then the music started. So this idea that ancient civilizations were created by beings from other planets expressed in very pseudoscience books like the Chariots of Gods, uh, written by Eric von Denick, for example. And this uh, type of literature was very popular in 1970s. In the second episode, uh, Adama and his fleet encountered the planet Cobol. In the series, Cobol is the home of the first man and the home of the gods as well where humanity uh, was created. Cobol was now the uninhabited planet where the gods lived. These gods were beings with, uh, of course, superior intelligence and technology, and they colonized the entire galaxy. The first scene showing Cobol, uh, you can see here, uh, the, featuring the three pyramids uh, of ancient Egypt and the the sequence and the following scene, um, they show the temple of Karnak, which in Kobol was located uh, in a city uh, named Eden. Adama is there to find information about the location of Earth. He walks between all these columns and these uh, pictures here are taken from the movie and you can see and you can recognize the, the temple, the Egyptian temple. And he walks with Apollo, his son and Serena, uh, and he was able, of course, to read and interpret the ancient scripts, uh, which are actually the original hieroglyphs and the, the scenes from these uh, columns. What is interesting in this sequence is the mix of different evidence to fit uh, in the plot. The lords of Kobo are portrayed as the ancient Egyptians. They are buried like ancient Egyptian kings in tombs that, of course, are protected uh, by secrets uh, and threats, uh, traps, such as the location um, of the 13th colony Earth. Um, the precise location of our planet lies with the ninth uh, and last Lord of Kobo. So the secret is hidden in his tomb and uh, Adama uh, tries to read and of course decipher uh, the enigma. His tomb is sealed and protected with a lot of uh, traps that can only be avoided by those who have the seal of the Lords. A medallion passed through generations uh, that, of course, he, he's, uh, he has his own. The last Lord of Kobo is shown as a sort of remake of Tutankhamun. And, of course, uh, at the end of the episode, the Cylons uh, arrive and attack uh, at the exact moment where, uh, when they are about to discover uh, the location of Earth and everything goes wrong. Uh, in the 15th episode uh, of season one, they actually meet the gods, uh, which are shown as a superior race, uh, very spiritual, that developed from the lords of Kobol and are now in a different sphere. And they finally point the fleet towards the location of Earth. The overall narrative is not original in Battlestar Galactica and, of course, inspired by other historical and religious reference. Um, the idea of a lost civilization resembled, for example, the myth of Atlantis, the legendary continent that housed a lost civilization uh, and was later submerged. The imagined features of Atlantis served as an inspiration for the new home starship of the gods, as you could see in the last slide. Similarly to the, to the argument in Galactica, Atlantis, or Cobol in this case, is the home of a superior race that brought civilization to our planet. This narrative about Atlantis became very popular in the 19th century with the book by Donnelly uh, and further developed in the early 20th century, along with colonialism and racial discourses that privilege white Western supremacy. It is a teleological narrative in which Europe is entitled and is the entitled representative of um, civilization, helping, educating, uh, um, making improvements to other inferior race. 
This narrative paved the way for an understanding that Egyptians and Toltecs, among other um, ancient civilizations, could not have produced their own heritage. This argument allowed Western, specifically Europeans, to progressively incorporate or remove various ancient societies uh, from its history. The idea of Europe representing a superior civilization justified colonialism and colonial violence. The understanding that a superior race brought magnificent knowledge to many African civilizations, such as the Egyptians, for example, erases any possibilities of accomplishments and consequently rejects uh, the very existence uh, of these people without the protectorship and the improvement of Europeans. So gods, giants, and aliens became a metaphor to an imperialistic type of history based on evolution with very little space for diversity. The gods or aliens are the colonizer who should be seen as those who brought gifts rather than imposed uh, obligations, violence uh, to the people uh, they colonize. On the other hand, the idea of Cobol as a place that originates humanity from special beings and transmits their knowledge to others is associated with another very popular anthropological theory from uh, 19th century, which uh, is known as diffusionism. Uh, diffusionism stresses the transmission of things from one culture to another. Uh, and I can mention here, for example, the work of Sir Grafton Elliot Smith uh, at the end of 19th century, who believed that a lot of technological improvements were, improvements were transmitted from ancient Egypt to other civilizations. So the golden age of Egypt, as many other places, uh, he argued, could only exist because of a strong and centralized state. Uh, and thank goodness we are revisiting this type of approach. Um, very much looking forward, uh, David Graber and David Wingrow's book. For him, the prosperity of the entire nation, uh, in this case specifically uh, ancient Egypt, depended on a success of the state as an institution. And we can refer back, of course, to Wittwogel's uh, hydraulic hypothesis, for example, which is very much aligned with imperialistic practices. This type of scholarship became popular and quickly appropriated by exoteric and spiritualist doctrines that believed in a common spiritual or alien origin of humanity, as we can see in the development of spiritism, a Christian faith that incorporates the Hindu, uh, the Hindu idea of karma in places like Brazil during the beginning of 20th century. According to spiritists, ancient Egyptians are represents of the fifth and the ultimate uh, human race, the Aryans. In this narrative, ancient Egyptians, are, as their ancestors in Atlantis, were helped by superior spiritual entities who gave them the knowledge and the technological development. After accomplishing the, uh, their mission, they came back to their home planet and left humanity. Then also, according to uh, this type of literature, the absence of the superior uh, spiritual beings uh, from places like Egypt, uh, India, or even South America, for example, explains the little development of these countries in comparison to Europe. Civil civilization was brought to them once and can be brought again through colonialism. It is important to highlight at this point how science fiction can blend historical and mythological narratives into discourses of power that are repeated, interjected, and disseminated through images. Superheroes and villains, who are part of our mo modern mythologies, reenact colonial narratives. Ancient Egypt was the home of special beings who later left the planet. We have loads of uh, reference to monuments, spiritual beings, aliens, and authoritarian states from uh, this scenario in which ancient Egypt is imagined. It becomes a very specific type uh, of ancient civilization that is part of um, a colonial enterprise, and it should be seen this way. It is not by chance that Cobol in Battlestar Galactica is shown in the city of Eden with Egyptian monuments and artifacts. Ancient Egypt embodies the ambition of an empire that is technological, technologically and spiritually developed. It serves as a canvas in which Western civilization, here represented by the European empires, can project an idealized lost past that can potentially be rescued and restored. 
But Egypt also represents what is dangerous, mysterious, powerful, and needs to be controlled or even destroyed. We still need to see, we still see the perpetuation of Orientalism, um, the erasure of African past and many other indigenous histories in this uh, type of sci-fi narratives. The mythology of Battlestar Galactica, rooted in the 19th century worldviews, was boosted by the American culture in the 1970s, like the Cold War, Vietnam, the landing on the moon, and the 13 colonies of mankind could also be associated with the American colonies who fled Europe to gain freedom from religious persecution. The overlap of American history with Mormon theology welcomed another imperialistic project to fight the Soviets and the communist threat in the world at that time. The idea uh, of chaos and uncertainty in the present invites us to constantly revisit our past and rethink our future. Regardless of present criticism, the very idea of ancient Egypt as as something you know, um, isolated, remains as a starting point uh, of European civilization. Egypt replaced Atlantis and Cobol in this uh, TV show. However, Egyptians are still seen as a lost place that was once the home of a superior race. Then archaeology, and more specifically Egyptology, becomes the only way to grasp something that does not need to be understood, deconstructed, problematized, or properly investigated, and only discovered, um, revealed, because we already know, we already built in our imagination what this is, is about. So I would like to thank you uh, for your attention and looking forward uh, to the discussion.